All right, everyone, welcome back. As you can see, I've, I've unloaded all the lumber off the trailer. I've, un, I've taken off the rub rails, taken all that extra weight I put on there to do the, to the weight balance. I've taken that all off so that I can start working on bending the tail down. Um, I'm gonna get the trailer back. It's, <clears throat> it sits really, really level on the shop floor here, but the shop floor is not perfect. So I am gonna put the jack stands back under it not to lift it up any though if, if even if i do it won't matter and i'll explain why in a minute but anyway i'm going to put those jack stands back under there to make it nice and stable so when i am pushing on this i'm not um, compressing the springs and giving myself a uh, an incorrect reading that pie piece that i need to take out of the three foot mark there is inclusive it's 14.1 degrees so 7.05 degrees on each side of plum is what I need to cut out and that'll let the, the tongue fold down and then basically once I get it on the jack stands where I want it stable I'll take a measurement I know how much also I need to drop the back I need to drop the back um, right right at eight and five eighths of an inch so once I have it on the jack stands I'll measure the distance from this lower corner to the floor and then cut a, a block of wood probably i'll subtract the eight and five eighths from that whatever that dimension is that's left over i'll cut a block of wood and set that on the floor so in essence then when i when it's lowered down and it touches that block of wood that should get me right exactly where i want to go so anyway um we'll just uh i'm gonna get started on laying out the the uh, pie piece cut and get going on that Again, I'm going to use the uh, just the digital angle finder, not angle finder, but digital key bevel or, or protractor. So what I'm doing there is I'm just setting it so I can use the top frame as the reference point, I'm setting it to 97.05 degrees. That puts it um, on the on this end, and then I'll come back to seven and a half less than, so 92 and a half, or excuse me, uh, 82 and a half for the other angle. Okay, so that's back, um, back nice and level. Of course, way more, way more stable. I'm not wiggling around on the tires and the springs. I'm gonna sweep the floor and measure that up, get the blocks cut, and then we'll get the torch out and get going. While I'm, while I'm at it, every once in a while I try to think of anything that, any tools that might be interesting to you guys. One, this tape measure. I'm sure you've all seen a tape measure. But this tape measure is a, I don't know what its official name, I guess, a halving or self-centering tape measure. So if you're ever, whether you do metal work or woodwork or whatever it is, and you need to know the halfway point on something that you're measuring, if it's an easy, nice, even measurement, say 24 and a half, that's really easy to know that, that the halfway would be 12 and a quarter. But when you start getting into some of the more odd fractions, or a, let's say 37 and... 7 16 so most people off the top of their head aren't going to be able to rattle that off but it's kind of nice to know uh, how, let the tape measure do it so what this tape measure is is a it it says on self-centering so i'll show you what it would be on the 12. so as you can see here uh, 12 the regular regular measurements are across the top and then on the bottom is half of everything so in the case of 12 you'll see six so if you measure your whole piece and it tells you right there that six is the halfway point. So then you would just go back to the normal six and do it. Um, but again, if you took an oddball one, let's say a 27 and something, 
27, some oddball, then you look, just look down at the bottom and that tells you what the halfway point of that 27 and say 3 16ths is, or, and then you can go to that actual measurement. So that's kind of a handy tool if you're needing to split, split the difference on a lot of things. And then the other thing, I mean, everybody is either, I imagine, used or knows, if you're watching this channel, you either used or you know what a flat disc is. Here's a pretty well worn out one. Um, the one downfall to flat discs, other than they wear out pretty quickly. They work fine on flats. Um, they work great on outside corners, but if you need to get into an inside corner or a large enough radius, like when I did this half round, they fit in there pretty good. But, for instance, when I welded those ears on, or a good example will be the stake pockets. When those are welded on, it creates that inside 90 degree corner. So when they're brand new, there's a pretty good edge there that's square, and you can even actually, after they get worn like this, you can grind them down. But I didn't know about these until actually a couple months ago on another YouTube channel that I watched, and I had no idea that they even make them. It's a flat disc for specifically inside corners. So to look at it from the outside, it looks just like any other flat disc. But as I rotate it around, as you can see, the flat material goes all the way around and wraps onto the back side. So that allows you to, if, if this is a corner that you've got to get into, I'm going to make a corner. If this is a corner that you have to get into, it allows you to reach right into that corner and actually you can rock it back and forth. So anyway, uh, just a couple of tools that, that I'd share with you. You might be interested in. Okay, so I just did that uh, quick calculation, and the block on this end needs to be five and an eighth inch tall, and the one on the other end needs to be five and a sixteenth. So I think I'll probably cut those out of some old four by fours, and that again, that's just going to give me kind of a stopping spot. I'll just double check the angle um, before I make the final welds on those five pieces. I think I'm actually, we'll see. I think I'm gonna probably put a jack under the back because I actually could feel it with my leg as it was starting to already droop down. Um, there's a little piece left there in the middle that'll hold it, but I'll probably go to the other side. And then when I dress it up the grinder, I'll probably actually put, put a jack under it and open it up a little bit so I can clean it up. I fold them together then I'll I'll grind a chamfer in it for the weld prep um, that gives you an idea with the cutoff wheel I was able to grind um, up into up into the web and kind of take that thicker part out 
So, um, should be good in that guard. Let's see if it'll, I don't think, there's a fair amount of weight here, so it might just fold down on its own. Let's see. Darn near, it came down probably an inch or so. Yeah, I'm not even going to have to heat it. I'm going to be able to just push on it. So we'll see what happens here. Looks pretty good. All right, one other way to kind of see how close I am on the angle is to use one of these angle indicators. They're magnetic. They're used a lot in woodworking, things like that. Like you can clamp them on the table saw blade to figure out what the angle is. And I'll show you there, it just shows the angle and then as you tilt it changes it and you can you can zero it wherever you want so what i'll do is i'll set it on the the main frame zero it and then move it around to the tail section bring it over here for that and then that tells me pretty accurately what the so there is zero on that portion that will move it over here to this portion and we have 13.49 degrees, and if you recall, we were shooting for 14.1, and they're not touching this block yet, so if I push down, I can get to the 14.1. So, that's the other way to check for whether or not I've reached the angle that I need. So I'm gonna, I'll pause it here so I can finish kind of dialing that in exactly because that might take me 10 or 15 minutes of going back and forth. And then I'll, uh, I'll pack it in place and then I'll do the weld prep and bring you back and, and show you that. All right, this morning before I get going on the ramp fabrication, so I don't get ahead of myself, I'm gonna go ahead and weld up, or finish welding the stake pockets and the rub rails, and then the spring hangers. Uh, so that'll, that step will all be done, and then all that'll be left is the ramp, so that'll be kind of a time lapse, because it's stuff you've already seen. So let's get going on that. Alright, I was getting ready to weld in the um, weld the rub rails on and I decided to make a slight change that I'll show you that involved a little bit of machining. Wouldn't have had to do that, but just makes it easier with the torch. The um, rub rails, I'll show you here, the rub rails are the same height as the stake pockets. So that means when I welded them in, Instead of trying to reach in here in really tight con confines and weld on this inside, I'm going to run a bead on the top and then I'm going to run a bead on the bottom, which would be fine. Um, but because the material is exactly the same height as the stake pockets, 
that would have, I mean, I could have ground down in there, probably ground a V out, um, but that would leave the bead standing kind of humped up on top of the material. I like having more of a fillet type weld that, that blends in nicely. So what I did is I just notched out the rub rail a little bit on the bottom. So that'll let me lower these down. So I'll show you here. Yeah, you can see that notch out. So that'll let me lower the rub rail down as it's in its hole and still then create a little bit of a fillet area up here on the top. Um, so nothing special there. What I did that I just want to touch on a little bit is when I did that with the torch, um, I'm not nearly as steady as I used to be. And I like, even though it doesn't matter, it's going to have well beat in it. It's nice to have a nice straight torch line versus something um, a little shaky. So I just built, uh, built just a little pattern that the torch can follow. I think I mentioned that in one of the earlier videos that I could have did a pattern for or a template for those. I think it was the ears. So anyway, what I did is I just tacked up a piece of one inch square tubing that you can see here that matches that cutout minus the thickness of the center port on the torch tip to the outside. So that kind of gives you that, that repeatable shape and a nice a straight edge run again so you get a nice straight line. What it doesn't do is it doesn't, you still got to try to hold your torch height, um, which isn't that hard, but um, if I was going to go to that much trouble to make this, which wasn't a huge amount, but a little bit of trouble to make that, I thought I'd make that last little bit of having to hold the torch tip off the base of the metal also consistent. So I just machine went over to lay the machine down, took a piece of actually that same one inch pin, bored a hole in it and cross drilled it and threaded it for, so you can see here, um, I just added that to the torch. It's got a set screw so you can change the height on it and take it off. And what that allows to happen is, if I can hold it here to where you can see it, is that allows the torch to just run on, the, on this bracket, on the ledge, turn the angle. It runs on the, on the tubing like that. And then, so when you're here, it holds that distance off of the, the base metal. And I just basically kind of almost treat it like you would a router on a pattern following bit. So as you can see there, it goes pretty quick. It gives it a nice, consistent, uh, same exact cut each time, just a matter of knock a little bit of the slag off and lay it up into place. So that was the last cut on the kind of, I guess, the prep work for the rub rail. So I'm gonna go ahead and get those, get the other side clamped in place and get those all welded out. All right, welcome back everyone. Based on what I've edited so far, we should be pretty close to uh, another half an hour session. So I think this will wrap up um, episode 10. I'm gonna do a quick recap because I've done a few things off the camera that, that you didn't see, but um, really technique wise, it was nothing new. It was just to finish welding out things. Um, one of them is in here on the beaver tail. Um, you can see that I've got the diamond plate, or excuse me, the expanded metal on there. 
Um, it's laid up there and, and welded mostly, and I got a few tack welds left to put in just so it doesn't rattle. Um, then also, I added, um, I, I edited out the original footage because it really wasn't that interesting, but I added in um, a couple stake pockets here and there. So if I wanted to put some sideboards, which I'll plan on doing around the trailer, if I needed to uh, haul a load of decorative bark or whatever, some topsoil or whatever, um, I can put a um, the boards on the side via the stake pockets and also one at the rear to keep things from spilling off. So I welded those in. Uh, I also changed my mind a little bit on how the end will be. Instead of it being squared off, because it was going to be pretty low to the ground, I mentioned a couple times, it doesn't really hurt anything if you go in and out of a driveway and it scrapes, but it is a little annoying. So I decided to taper the rear portion off. Move you over here where you can see the angle. Um, so I just made a plumb cut line, or not a plumb, I guess a parallel line with the angle of the floor or the road and that way that gives me some additional clearance here between the bottom of the angle and the ground so the trailer's sitting about at the correct height right now that gives me about eight to eight and a half inches of clearance which um, it was about five before so I made those changes um, off camera I did clamp the fender. This fender's clamped into place where it'll where it will ultimately be. Um, how I determined that was that I I lowered the tongue jack down as far as it would go, and that let the equalizer link um, there on the trunnion area that let that equalizer link oscillate as far as it can. In essence, it it raises the one axle up higher than the other axle. And then I put a small spacer block on top of the tire and then clamped the fenders in that place. So that way, even if you go through a, a dip, there's no way the tires can actually come up and touch the fenders and yet keeps the fenders as low as possible. So that's, those are, that height's been determined. So I guess the, um, I'll kind of finish it out here and then the next episodes, I said in uh, this episode, actually, I'd be doing the uh, ramps, but that's obviously not the case. So now, actually, that is about that's all that's left for the most part. I have the, the brackets that the fenders will mount to to do. Um, so I will keep going on the ramps. And then that leaves, as I mentioned, the fender brackets. I'm going to do uh, the tail lights. I'm going to do guards around the tail lights so that they don't get, if you get bumped up against something, they don't get damaged. Um, and then I have the jacks. Those came in. Those jacks I talked about that are going to go back here. I've got those to mount yet. So we're kind of winding down to the last few portions of the fabrication. And then uh, the weather's starting to shape up here in the Northwest. And hopefully it'll be warm enough. We'll get this thing outside and get it. Uh, painted. That's something you guys could throw in the comments if you want. Uh, what color you think um, might be good. I will tell you it's not going to be black. Everybody's favorite is black. So I'm going to change it up a little bit and do something different than that. So you can maybe throw in your comments what you think it ought to be or what, you, what color you guess that I might paint it. And so I guess I'll finish off with um, a little bit of footage that I had edited out. Um, but then uh, one of the guys at work, he mentioned that that's good footage to be in here. So I guess I'll throw a little caveat in that it must have been getting uh, cold here in the shop because I guess I decided that it was uh, that I needed a little bit of a campfire. So uh, maybe you'll get some enjoyment out of this little clip. And after the clip, then that'll be it. And we'll see you for the next episode. Thanks for tuning in.